So because it was due last night, I I as test student has to use LayPass to open it. And just before I started the recording, I um, double checked to, to make sure I know um, uh, what questions I've done because I've done this uh, kind of eject form of review about, uh, uh, well, <laughs> one semester ago, last semester. And it is linked here in this video. Uh, if you just watch it, the later part, there's the, uh, free form portion. So if I get the exact same question as uh, what's in the video, I will um, just uh, um, stop the attempt. And um, because I'm also the instructor, I can give test the student another attempt for the technical problems. And uh, we'll hope that we don't get lucky twice. Uh, we don't get unlucky twice. So, so yeah, okay, I'm all set here. So I'm gonna use this space to keep track of my work and also work on some things. And as I keep saying, um, 20 minutes, even for me, is not a lot of time. So I do have to be uh, quick about working through the questions, uh, sometimes to the point of maybe not fully explaining the things I might if I had 40 minutes instead of 20 minutes. To the... So let me start. And until I start, I don't know what, okay, good. That's not the question I've done before, so I can just go ahead and do it. So this is a rotation, a kind of a static equilibrium question, uh, which is all the questions because <laughs> this is rotation and static equilibrium, um, uh, the uh, assessment. Um, I think there might be a gravity question here and there, but it's a uh, uh, smaller number of questions. So it says the uh, spool of string is pulled by it strings, string to the right, okay, with this string below the center of the spool. I think it missed the opportunity to say of spring, uh, strings. The spool is supported on the ground by, okay, do I need to? I think I should start diagramming it here because um, it's uh, mentioning some quantities that are not diagrammed on the problems diagram. So the radius R is the full radius of the spool the, to the outer rim. And it's uh, saying that the radius to the inner rim is half that. Um, the spool has a mass can be approximate this is solid disk of rate. Okay. When it says a solid disk, I'm assuming this formula is going to be useful. I happen to have this memorized. Now, you don't have to have that memorized. Um, if you don't have that memorized, this is open book. You are allowed to use the textbook, especially. And uh, well, textbook, <laughs> you can also use lecture pages and whatnot. But for the, something like this, I'm what I uh, if I don't didn't have this memorized, what I would be looking for is a table of stuff, table of moments of inertia. So uh, section ten point four has this table, and on this table are a bunch of geometries. One of them is uh, there should be a disk. Uh, or a solid cylinder <laughs> um, about the, uh, here through the center, right? Rotating this way, yeah. That's one half MR squared, what I have there. So I have it memorized, so I'm gonna write it down, uh, anticipating that will be useful somewhere. Uh, as the string is pulled, the spool rolls without slipping. Okay, uh, that rolling without slipping is uh, useful. That's a, and that's a reminder to, for you to use rolling without slipping. There's a whole lecture on that that hopefully you've watched before attempting this question. Uh, what it's telling you is it's giving you this relationship that um, sort of the tangential speed is equal to omega times r. Uh, this uh, relationship can really only be used to when you have uh, this rolling without slipping condition. And by the way, for both of these R's, I, I'm just gonna be aware of the context and make sure I use the correct radius for whatever circular motion in <laughs> that particular part calls for. Um, yeah. Okay, so in part A, it says, as the string and pulley is being to the right, in which direction will the spool roll? Oh, you had this uh, in your lab last week. So hopefully that lab will help you answer it. And if you just to remember the answer from the lab, that's uh, uh, 
the stool will roll to, I almost said the left, roll to right uh, clockwise. And um, you should have an explanation. Um, and, and I'll say uh, explanation with the uh, diagram in attached uh, work in short, net torque uh, is clockwise. Um, and this is the full explanation that, uh, oh, no one asked me this in the lab. So maybe people didn't get this. Um, <laughs> so in the lab, if you uh, didn't, um, if this puzzled you, so this is how I like to analyze this setup. So the most common wrong answer, also the only other possible wrong answer that people give is that people think that this might roll uh, counterclockwise. When people give that answer, that's because people are thinking of this uh, applied force acting around the center of mass. It looks counterclockwise, so why shouldn't it roll counterclockwise? And why not <laughs> is if you are um, using this as your center of rotation to analyze this motion, you are missing an important uh, part of other forces that are there. You know, there's gravity, there's normal force. Those, okay, they balance out, don't do anything important. But what's important here that a lot of people will forget about is friction. Whenever you have rolling without slipping, you can no longer um, ignore friction, you have to include that in your analysis. So once you include the friction and analyze it that way, then you will get the correct answer, even with this as your center rotation, that the overall net torque is clockwise. Now, there is a shortcut. You don't necessarily have to go through um, that. So um, the easiest way to see that it's going to roll clockwise and that the applied force is actually providing clockwise torque is to use this point as your center of rotation. Uh, when it's rolling without slipping, this point actually isn't moving. So it's a great uh, pivot point to, to use. And you can see that uh, the, the tension force is providing clockwise torque and whatever the friction force is, it doesn't affect the torque. It will affect the net force, but um, it, for figuring out the net torque is clockwise, using this as center of rotation, you, you can ignore friction. So that's my explanation. Um, diagram explaining uh, clockwise and torque. Okay, let me just see how many parts this has. Uh, okay, four parts and like uh, 30 more minutes. Okay, I gotta go faster. Uh, okay, it says find the acceleration A and angular acceleration alpha of the spool as it is pulled. Okay, so I have to, yeah. So it's a static equilibrium like, um, it's a, a, so, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's see. So since it's not actually static equilibrium, I'm thinking through if I can still. Uh, let me. So uh, so let me do this. I'm going to use um, for answering this question. I'm going to use the actual center of mass as my center. Uh, it, it matters in that uh, when you work out the net torque. Um, the kind of the freedom you have in picking your center of rotation, you only have that freedom if your net force is equal to zero. And in situations like here, where I'm suspecting my net force won't be zero, um, I might could get into trouble if I just randomly shift my center of rotation. So let me use this point as my center of rotation, and I'll draw my proper free body diagram of all the forces that's uh, acting on this thing. So I'm gonna have gravity that I can pretend is acting at this point. And I have my normal force, which is acting at this point. And gravity and normal force actually just cancel each other out. So yeah, could have ignored it, but I'm just doing it properly. And there's gonna be friction force here that you definitely can ignore, especially because you're looking for acceleration eventually. Um, 
So uh, if you don't include the friction explicitly, you will get wrong acceleration. So I guess that there is a shortcut way to do it. Uh, I might describe that after we are done. <laughs> so let me do the proper orthodox way first. So I've drawn all my free body diagram forces. That's a step number one in standard strategy. Step number two, I need to define my axis. Uh, I don't see any reason not to use the same regular <laughs> straight axis because that's the direction of acceleration anyway. And I'll say, um, just to make things easier for myself, I'll say clockwise is positive. Um, that way I don't have any extraneous negative signs I have to contend with. Um, okay, that's step number two. Step number three, I need to break down my forces. Nothing to break down. Everything is along direction of axis. Step number four, I'm finally writing down my uh, Newton's second law equations. So if it, this was before rotations, then we would have two Newton's second law equations, one for the X direction, one for the Y direction. Uh, the Y direction one is easy. Uh, they should add up to zero. So I say zero is the net force in the Y direction divided by mass. So zero is equal to normal force minus mg divided by m. X direction, slightly more interesting. It's probably going to be accelerating. So we'll say acceleration is given by net force in the X direction divided by m. Net force in the x direction, it's gonna be the tension minus the friction force. Tension minus the friction force divided by m. And I hope as you see this equation, uh, you know that you don't have enough equations. We don't know acceleration, and I think we are given this force, but we don't know friction force. And if you are thinking, oh, I can write down this equation for friction force, F is equal to mu n, uh, this will actually be wrong because when something is rolling without slipping, it's uh, the friction between those surfaces, it's a static friction. So you don't actually have a formula for friction force. You have a condition that these two surfaces don't slide against each other. So you need a third equation, which will come from torque. Um, so so this, these are the linear motion equations. You have rotation equation. So uh, here I'm gonna treat it as uh, just a you know clockwise counterclockwise thing. So um, so all I would need to say is okay. Uh, I have rotation within a plane that I'm considering, and the angular acceleration of the rotational motion is going to be net torque divided by uh, rotational inertia. Okay, so now net torque is um, I guess. Yeah, and I will calculate the torque about this center just to be careful. Um, so, so this is the lever arm for the the tension force. So it'll be uh, R the lever arm R over over two times the tension force, and I gotta work out the sign. About this point, it's going counterclockwise, so it'll be a negative torque. Plus, I have one more force, friction force, that's going to give me some tension. So that will be uh, R times the friction force and positive because it's going clockwise. All of the divide by the uh, rotational inertia, which uh, I could have just write it out, one half MR squared. That's the rotational inertia of the entire pulley. Um, let me just make sure I'm not run oh, seven minutes. Okay, I gotta go faster. Um, so what I would say is, uh, yeah, I gotta go faster, but I don't need to panic. So I have these two equations and I think I don't need to use anything from this. So I'm gonna ignore it. I have one, two equations. I can uh, solve this for, um, I can solve this for A and alpha. And let me do that in Sage Math. I think that's going to save me a little bit of time. <laughs> so, um, and the uh, one thing I'm noting that it's gonna get me in trouble is that I alpha is the third unknown. I have only two equations. So I need a third equation. And the third equation I need is this thing. 
uh, where that's why it was important that they gave us that it's uh, rolling without. Um, it was important that they gave us it's uh, um, it, it's uh, uh, it's rolling without sleeping and actually not this equation but there's a version of this equation that applies to acceleration which will be a linear acceleration uh, here acceleration the center of mass is the angular acceleration times the the radius, distance to where it's pivoted. So I'm gonna use this as my third equation, which will allow me to solve for three unknowns. So let me just type those into my computer algebra system. Uh, I'm gonna need all my variables, A, F, T, uh, friction, and I don't need the normal force, not gonna use it. I need R. Uh, I need alpha, I think that's it. So equation one is A is equal to uh, FT minus F divided by N. Equation two is equal to alpha is equal to minus R over two times FT plus R times F divided by one half times N R squared. Equation three is a is equal to uh, alpha times alpha. So I'm gonna solve for um, the system of equations, one, two, and three. And I'm going to have a solve for A, alpha, and friction. Even though the question is asking for friction, I kind of need to say this so that the, the system knows that friction is an unknown quantity that they need to solve for it. So when it's done solving it, hopefully giving me you know, time to finish writing this out, then um, yeah, I have, so let me just uh, type this out. <laughs> Acceleration is equal to one third times Ft uh, divided by M. Alpha is equal to one third times Ft divided by M times R. So, yeah, that's it. And I will attach my work later. It says to find the total kinetic energy of the spool. So here, really, the answer is going to be um, uh, total kinetic energy is equal to work the work of kinetic energy theorem, uh, which is going to be apply the force times the distance. So um, F times T times D, I think that's it. There might be a caveat, but let me just answer the last part before I run out of time and just think about it a little more. If I, it, something tr sounds tricky. Find the amount of friction force between, oh, 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 I see. Net work done. Uh, so it has to be really FT minus the friction force. So I can use this friction, oh, well, I can just friction force, which will be Ft minus uh, two thirds times Ft uh, times, yeah. that's the caveat that you can just use the apply the force because the friction force causes you to do less network. Um, I'm gonna friction force between the spool and the floor, explain the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Friction force is equal to uh, two thirds times Ft. Um, so here I kind of short circuited the sum of this because I was just using computer algebra system that will give me the full um, full answer in one shot, uh, which is nice. And uh, I guess I can explain the role of friction here um, because the Friction force occurs in the Newton's second law equation for acceleration. The acceleration of the pulley is less than it would have been without the friction. Um, and also less than work is done on the pulley then FT alone would suggest. 
because the static friction force is doing negative um, work on the pulley as it is pulled a uh, distance e. Um, on the energy of the pool, yeah. Um, this is the translation of kinetic energy. Total T is uh, Ft times D. <laughs> Let me just type in the answer here. Um, uh, friction transfers a translational T to rotational T. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think it did not fully make sense. Um, I think I'm about to run out of time. So yeah, after it runs out of time, I'll explain the rest fully. So yeah, so let me explain the rest fully. <laughs> so um, I, I think as CND is my attempt at trying to get you to think through what could it be a paradoxical situation. Um, and uh, let me, <laughs> Let me just walk through that. Uh, walking through that properly, it definitely couldn't have been done in uh, in, in however much time. It, yeah, it, it's not really possible to do in 20 minutes. <laughs> so let me just use another 10 minutes or so just to explaining this paradox. Uh, so let's see. So you've so working through all this, you have this uh, answer, uh, which and I'm, I'm imagining uh, someone who's who has a lot of time, you know, more than twenty minutes, and is trying to make sense of this uh, answer. Um, so let me first copy down the answers I have. So I have these answers. Um, my acceleration is one third uh, Ft over M. My angular acceleration is basically this divide by R. Uh, so I guess I can write it that way. And my uh, friction force, uh, which we can use later is two thirds Ft. So someone looking at these answers can try to figure out using kinematics, um, after rolling um, D, what is uh, kinetic energy of the pulley? And, uh, and someone just uh, remembering only the translational kinetic energy, like I was when I was first thinking through this, could go through this argument. Oh, I can use um, if we, uh, the V squared formula. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two times acceler acceleration times delta X, delta X is D. I have the acceleration. So my V final squared will be zero, starting from rest. Uh, that um, one third, so two thirds FT over M times the distance D. So, for kinetic energy, you multiply through by one half. Um, uh, so for kinetic energy, you multiply through by one half M and you end up with kinetic energy is equal to one half cancels two. You have one third FT uh, times the M cancels that N. Um, and you might, if you look at it and think, hey, that looks good. I'm satisfied, then <laughs> I guess uh, there isn't a paradox yet that uh, you are trying to resolve. The paradox comes in here. Imagine someone who has the right amount of time to think about this setup. Um, so I hope you have uh, this uh, sense of feeling that energy is conserved in this setup, or more specifically, you don't have um, um, kinetic friction. So there isn't a, transfer of mechanical energy to something that's not mechanical energy. There is a heat and sound being generated. So as a, whoever's pulling with this FT amount of force, as they pull this spool by distance D, there is work being done that looks like this. Work done 
is going to be ft times d. So this is the subtle difference between uh, this, uh, this friction being kinetic friction versus static friction. When it's a static friction, all it does is it prevents a sliding between surfaces. It doesn't actually uh, take away mechanical energy into some other forms of energy. So you have this uh, total work being done by the agent that's uh, got nowhere else to go. And in this calculation of kinetic energy, you have accounted only for a third of that. And this is where someone who has even more <laughs> right amount of time to think about this setup might remember that um, this is just the translation of kinetic energy. Uh, for the total kinetic energy, you really have to account for rotational kinetic energy, which is one half I omega squared. And I have I, uh, I can use plug that in from there. For omega, for just uh, uh, easy of use, let me just uh, uh, use the, uh, the companion relationship to this that I think I erased. Companion relationship to this would be V is equal to omega R. Um, so omega squared, I can rewrite that as uh, uh, in this form, V squared over R squared. So let me plug in what I have and see what we get. Um, plugging in of what I have, one half I, that's a one half MR squared times uh, V squared, I have that from here. This was my V squared. So I'm gonna plug in two thirds FT over N times D divided by R squared. R squares cancel out as a, I was hoping they would. This M cancels out that M. Um, well, one of the halves cancel out that. Uh, let me finish writing this out and see what I might have missed. Oh. <laughs> Let me finish writing this stuff. Um, sorry, I'm simplifying in my head and getting this. Um, uh, let me write it out and think it through. I have one sixth um, ft times d, which, it, which doesn't sound enough. I was looking for two, two thirds ft times d. Um, so I'm looking at this emotion as a motion of this rigid body, center of mass moving at, um, center of mass is uh, moving at this speed. That's right, it, this difference gives me a third Ft times D. Um, and for the rotational kinetic energy, one half I squared, V squared over R. Um, let me just do a slight alternate calculation. Uh, you know what, I, I think I'm pretty sure this sensor is uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, right amount of time. It has to do with um, what's the distance rolled out. So imagine this pulley here. So, if this force was being applied like at distance r, then what I wrote out here would be correct. But it's not. As this thing uh, rolls uh, distance d, if you measure out how much of the string that you pulled out, or not pulled out, actually got pulled <laughs> into the spool, that amount of amount uh, of string, it's going to be D over two. Because uh, this is being acted on at a distance R over two. So you can uh, convert what this distance works out to be in terms of the angular displacement of the spool. And you can work out uh, again, as this rolls that angular displacement of the data, uh, what would the, the length of the string that needs to be rolled back onto the spool, and that's going to end up being D over two. So for the work that the agent of this tension force does, 
the distance that you need to use is not D, the amount to the spring uh, string is pulled. And the amount of split rolls, it's going to be the distance uh, D over two that actually represents the length of the string, length of displacement that's associated with this force. So, yeah, I think with that, everything works out. Um, so, yeah, total kinetic energy is not that. <laughs> that's the correct answer. So, uh, so let me just note that here. So, uh, for C, uh, total kinetic energy is equal to Ft times D divided by two for this uh, difference in how much string is actually pulled out. So how much total work is done by your agent. And we did the correction and I think that's the last of the correction I see. Uh, when you add up these two, uh, you can uh, do this calculation yourself. When you do the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy, I have them written up there, both of them, one third FT times D plus one sixth FT times D. When you do combining of the fraction, you should get one half FT times D. And that's the, uh, that's exactly as you would expect um, based on this expectation. And Looking at all this and uh, thinking through how does the spool rotate? Um, it, because it actually, um, it, it would rotate a little bit in a totally frictionless case, it would rotate the other way around. Um, but in any case, it, thinking through how the it's the friction force that causes it to rotate uh, clockwise, uh, that's uh, where I get the summary, the friction force, um, the friction force transfers translational kinetic energy to rotational kinetic energy. Because your translational kinetic energy is less than what you would have expected it to be, something based on this. And uh, that difference has gone to the rotational kinetic energy. So oh, well, that was probably like 20 minutes of explanation. <laughs> so let me attach my work um, for that. and. And so I think I've said this before, but it bears repeating. Um, if you don't get all this in 20 minutes or you know, 20 minutes plus the additional time you use for organizing your work, that's totally fine. Um, it's uh, really, it's the one thing I dislike about uh, one, uh, the written exam setup, which is that if, uh, I were discussing this situation with someone who's, uh, let me just rename this C, uh, someone who has a good grasp of mechanics and I see the answers that I myself was giving uh, initially, then it, it, like in the kind of interactive setup, I can, I can ask, I can ask follow-up questions. Uh, you know, what about this? What about that? How does, uh, this thing that appears contradictory, okay, and uh, with uh, enough time, like about an hour, to converse back and forth. It's something that a lot of people who are uh, competent in mechanics will get, but it's the kind of thing that, um, unless you've gone through this kind of reasoning before, as I have, when I wrote the question the first time I was writing up the solutions, um, it's not things that people are expected to get on their first try. Save work and continue, and I can always review my work. And think if you want to change your work, you can't do it in this screen. You basically have to refresh it, um, so that uh, now you can go to add work and do that. So, so yeah, that's uh, the kind of the full answer. So again, this is wrong. Um, the total kinetic energy should be this, and I can't change any of that in the answers. But uh, if I wanted to, I can note in the answers, uh, um, C, attach work for updated answer for total kinetic energy. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, that's the question. I think uh, that's all the time we have for free form. Um, let me know of any questions that come up. And by the way, I think, uh, can you use uh, 
yeah, you can use message instructor feature while you are in this view. So, you know, if there are any questions that um, you felt were puzzling, uh, wasn't sure if we, so, you know, I'll eventually go ahead and get to that. But in the meantime, uh, for any burning questions, you do have a message instructor feature. So uh, do use them if you feel moved to. Uh, 